Hello everyone, it's your girl JoJo coming to you with the review for Mary Mary Season 5, Episode 4. So let's get into the review. Alright, I ain't even finna make no excuses for y'all. I know that I have greatly exceeded the statute of limitations for uploading a review. I am so late on this review, it's not even funny. So, I'ma just say, Resurrection Sunday got the best of your girl. I had family coming into town, unexpected, and just threw my schedule all off. And I'ma just leave it at that. And we just gonna jump straight into this review. I ain't even gonna say no more. That's it. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about it. Hurry up so we can move on to episode five. <laughs> have any notes for this review like not any that's sitting right in front of me because I left them in my car so I'm really really slacking y'all <laughs> on this episode four but I'm gonna try to do it without my notes because I have actually set a timer we gonna hurry up and do this review because I'm already late so I don't need to be trying to bore y'all with everything that happened because I'm pretty sure by now I'm so late that y'all don't watch the show but I want to remain consistent and stick to my video schedule so I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway and then right after this I'm gonna do episode five and I'm going to get it uploaded in the morning. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to just call this episode the frustration episode. Because that is what I felt the entire time I watched this show. I, I went through several levels of frustration. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about my frustration, my aggravation, and we're going to talk about each level because that is pretty much the entire episode for me anyway. What was it for y'all? Tina and Warren are in the car and they're on their way to Greensboro because they are going to surprise Tina for the second leg of her tour, uh, second show of her tour. And they're both very excited. They're in the car and they're both saying how they're coming to support Tina and Teddy. Okay, keep that mind, keep that word in mind, y'all. Support. So as they're in the car, we find out that they're really coming to support, but not really, because Erica plans on stealing Google back, and Warren plans on bringing up Mary Mary to Teddy. So I'm just like, okay, are y'all coming to support, or are y'all coming to enhance, or or uh, that's not the word I'm looking for. Um, Whatever word I'm looking for, your own agendas. Is that what you're coming to do? Because that's what it sounds like to me. But I wasn't frustrated, at least not yet. Okay, so when Erica and Warren do finally arrive, Tina and Teddy are very excited to see them, very excited to have their support, uh, keep that word in mind, support, and very glad that they decided to come. Now, as soon as they get there, at some point during a sound check or after a sound check, Warren begins to, to start in on Teddy about the Mary Mary thing. He's just like, yeah, all of this is really nice, but I'm trying to get back on the road. I'm trying to do this Mary Mary thing. And Teddy is looking at Warren the same way that I was looking at Warren. So this was my very first level of frustration, y'all. I was just like, Warren... You do realize that you came to somebody else's show, right? You do realize that you are on their time. Now, I know y'all are thinking you always agree with Warren what's any different from any other time. The difference is you're not on your turf. You're on their turf, okay? You're on their time. This is their show. This is their tour. Now is not the time to be bringing any of that up, especially during, like, a sound check. So I was just like... What is this about? So that was my very first level of frustration. Teddy ended up blowing uh, Warren off, which we all knew he was going to do. Why did we know Teddy was going to do that? Repeat after me. Because Teddy wants to be a star. Okay, never forget that I told y'all that. Teddy wants to be a star. He done got a little bit of taste of that star life, and he ain't finna let nobody take it from him, not even Warren. So then we get my next level of frustration. And my next level of frustration happens with Erica and Gugu. They're in another room and they're having a conversation. Erica is basically trying to fill Gugu out about this tour. And she already knows how Gugu is feeling, which is why she came out there the way that she did. I'm almost certain that they probably had a conversation beforehand. Um, but they're talking to one another and Gugu is basically saying she she's not sure about working with Tina because of how Tina is. She doesn't know if she wants to continue to be a part of this tour. So Erica takes this as her moment like, yeah, I knew it. What you really need to do is come work with me because I'm doing the Devil Wars and I need... Y'all, I thought I saw something on my wall. <laughs> I need somebody to style me. Well, of course, the Dove Awards is great. It's a big opportunity. And the whole time, y'all, I thought she was saying the Dove Awards at first. I was just like, why was she, why was she be hosting? Who getting a $20 bill? I don't understand why she's hosting the Dove Awards. But 
is Dove Awards. And I guess that Dove must be sitting right on Erica's shoulder because Baby Girl is bold to be coming up to somebody's, um, the second leg of somebody's tour and trying to steal their stylist as well as their host. So, of course, Google is always going to jump at an opportunity and a little bit more, a little bit more money. And she tells Erica, okay, well, let me, let me, let, let me, let me talk to Tina about it first. Okay. Let me let Tina know. And Erica's just like, yeah, yeah, let her know, but you need to come with me to do these Dove Awards. So basically, that's what's going to happen. And we all know what kind of Tyler Perry production we're going to get when they tell Tina this news. So then my third level of frustration enters in, y'all, when they get to the show. Okay, now, I... I understand when you're watching somebody's show, you're critiquing it in your head, and you may be making little comments, but again, what happened to all that support y'all were coming from, coming from, coming for Eric and Warren? What happened to that word that y'all kept bringing up in the car? So, they're in the audience, they're watching the show, and did anybody else see a little bit of low-key shade going on because that's exactly what I saw. They were sitting next to each other and they were kind of having like, yo, you know how you with your homegirl and y'all have the witty repertoire with each other. Y'all been friends for so long that y'all know each other's facial expressions. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Okay, that is what Erica and Warren were doing. So they would watch and then they would kind of be like, You know, it was a lot of that going on, okay? And they did it a few times. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I really felt about that, y'all. I didn't like it. It made me feel uncomfortable. And then I began to get aggravated because I could tell what they was doing. So Tina comes out stage, on stage, and she's doing like, I ain't gonna lie, I probably would have been looking at this funny too because I would have just been confused. Tina is on stage and she's doing like this, monologue. I'm telling you, I don't know what she's waiting on. Tyler Perry, get on the phone with Tina right now. Call her right now so she can do the stage play. You need to quit playing around and get that bread. Get that money. Okay, Tina is Tyler Perry gold. I don't care what nobody says. So, Tina is reading this monologue and she's just like, my husband cheating on me? I was hurt. I was confused. Was I not enough? Did I not do enough? He no. was very, very dramatic. It was giving me a table reading. It was giving me speech and debate class. <laughs> Y'all ever had speech and debate? When you go to your very first debate, you could use your book, but after that, they expect you to memorize it. That's kind of what um, Tina was giving me when she kept looking down at that book. And then Warren is in the audience, and he goes say in the confessionals, remind me to never cheat on Tina. I was like, she remind you to never cheat again, Warren. You think we done forgot? So, afterwards, uh, when they get backstage, I ain't even gonna mention Teddy, you know, sliding in there, shucking and jive. I don't care what nobody said. That nigga shucks and jives when he get out on that stage. And, you know, the women... I really do think that the women like Teddy. You know, you could tell by when they put the camera on the audience when Teddy comes out. Everyone's just like, whoa! You know, them women, they darn near taking their drones off. Teddy, I'm going to say this to you one time, and hopefully one time only. That run that you keep trying to do, either you need to make it into a full run, or you need to stop doing it. Every time you do it, it comes out a walk, a jog, a skip. It never makes it to a full run. It begins to fall down and crash horribly. And I'm tired of hearing it. It's like a, oh, stop. Okay, I don't want to hear that no more. You never make the run. Stop doing that. If you're not going to commit to the run, and I can't even do a full run, but I don't commit to them. Okay, so Teddy, if you ain't gonna do it right, then don't do it at all. I'm tired of seeing you do the mic like, oh, oh, and it doesn't make it. All right, now, I like you most of the time. But that run, if it's gonna keep going to a slow crawl, I just don't want you to do it. Okay, don't do it, Teddy. So after it's over, they're backstage, and Warren, of course, he has his critiques, okay? He tells Tina, y'all did an awesome job. Everything was good. But I'm going to tell you, when you get rid of that booklet or whatever you read out of, whatever he told her, um, you're going to, you know, just blow it out the water. I didn't think there was anything wrong with what Warren said. I thought that was true. Basically, he's saying when you get rid of that book, you can connect with the audience better and you won't constantly be looking down and looking up. 
I can understand that. Okay, that's he according to him, that's what was missing in the show, you know, that connection. So Tina, of course, me and Tina is offended. Okay, she doesn't appreciate Warren saying that to her. And I really think that Teddy had probably told Tina about the whole Mary Mary comment, and this probably had just trickled on down to her mood. Um but she tells Lauren, you know, what you want me to do? I haven't memorized everything. Do you want me to shorten the word? Girl, stop. Okay, don't nobody want you shorten, shortening or abbreviating the word. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying that over time, if you memorize it, you can have a better connection with the audience. Tina, girl, calm down. Okay, calm it all the way down. No box braids must be tight. Did you just get your edges done over? What you so mad for? My fourth level of frustration comes in with this conversation between Google and... Erica and Tina, we just gonna go ahead and dive right into it because I'm gonna try to break this down the best way I can. All right, first off, let me start off by saying that I really, really want to be mad at. The person that I want to be mad at is Google. And I'm gonna tell you why. Google is the stylist. Google gets the schedule. Google commits to a schedule. Google has the option to say yes or no to what is on the schedule that is presented to her. Uh, in a particular, in a regular world, a regular business world, I would think that Google would have to commit to what she said when she's working with somebody because those people would have paid her a what? Retainer. Now, we heard Google talking all about a retainer, and I think season one or season two, that they did not pay her, and she wanted one, and they couldn't understand why she wanted one. Well, I'm starting to wonder if they have let that whole retainer thing go and just assume that Google is going to be there when they need her. Now, this is, this is what I'm talking about when I say that I think sometimes it's best to keep family out of the business. I'm not saying that you don't want your family to win and if you own, put your family on. I understand all of that. But what, what I'm saying is it can get tricky. And this show is a good example of how tricky it can get. Had Google been paid a retainer, she would have been committed to doing whatever was on the schedule because they have already fronted her some money. It's like paying a deposit when you get your makeup done or anything like that. A lot of times these makeup artists require a deposit. Okay, so if anything gets canceled or whatever, they have to give you your deposit back and things of that nature. I feel like with Google, nothing is paid, no contracts are drawn up, nothing is really discussed outside of a verbal agreement. So Google can kind of just come and go as she pleases. So the way she sat there and told Tina, you know, I'm not going to be able to do your show. You're going to have to find a sub for me for the Greensboro or whatever show was coming up, not Greensboro, whatever show was coming up. And Tina's just looking at her like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't have anybody else. Like, are you kidding me? This is the second, this is my second show. Like, how are you going to leave? So she's talking directly to Google. Erica, who is behind her, okay, they kind of sitting like this, y'all, is chiming in and just like, uh, well, actually, she had my schedule first because that's what Tina asked her. Who schedule did you have first? And Erica says, who does head? Actually, she had my schedule first, and you came in, and you took her from me, but she don't get to talk too much, because y'all know Tina's a strong personality. So, Tina's talking to Google. She whipped around to Erica and said, excuse me, I'm not talking to you. Okay, you do not affect my tour. You do not affect my business. I am not talking to you. I am talking to Google in scene. And she turns back around and starts um, talking to Google, and Erica just sitting over there kind of like, you know, still trying to get her point across, but ain't nobody really listening to her. Tina is a much stronger personality, and she's pretty much just, uh, I can't get none of my words drowning Erica out. So Google is sitting there looking at Tina and just basically telling her, look, it's just one show. It's just one show. Okay, that's the whole basis of the argument, that it's just one show. And she says, well, Google, you're my host, and you are my stylist okay so erica chiming in again you already got your clothes picked out you don't need google to be here i was just like erica girl <laughs> google already said she was gonna do it okay let her handle her thing with tina you done already came and did what you came to do but you just <laughs> so again tina turns around and tells her again look i'm not talking to you i am talking to google you don't affect my tour I don't want you talking to me right now. So Erica's just like, well, I don't understand. We're like, why are you so mad? You know, you took Google from me, and it's only one night. You can get somebody to host for one night. 
Now, this is my frustration with Erica. Yes, she can get somebody to host for one night, but why should she have to? Okay, why did you come in there and, and do all of what you did? Okay, had you not had the Devil Wars, you wouldn't have been worried about Google. But now that you have something new to do, now you want Google. It is understandable. And I ain't even really mad at you for stealing her back because of the way that Tina spoke to you last time and the way that Tina did you last time. But Tina was right when she said that your problem is actually with Google because Google is the one that agrees to do these things. However, like I said, I can't be fully mad at Google because I don't think there is a there's no level of business discussed between the three of them. And that's why Google kind of feels like she can go between all of the both of the sisters and try to keep them both happy, which really, depending on what's what's going on, is going to be impossible. So uh Tina is frustrated. I understand her frustration, but also I'm looking at Tina like, okay, Tina, you know, what goes around does come back around. It sucks that Erica came to support you and played it like this. That's really the problem that I had with Erica. Like, don't come and say you coming to support and then steal her stylist. You know, that's you didn't come to support. At least Tina, you know, she was underhanded, but she took Google to the side and was just like, hey. You coming or not? <laughs> she didn't come to her, her show and pull her stylist from underneath her. So I don't know if I like the way that Erica did that. Um, I understand why she wanted Google back and why she wanted that get back. But I don't know. I was just frustrated with all three of them in that moment. Because it was just like, y'all are... <sighs> Oh, they make me tired when they do stuff like this, y'all. And then Tina was making a big deal about this hosting thing. Hosting thing. I was just like, girl, that thing that Google do, child, yeah, you get me fine. Welcome. Hallelujah. 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 Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. To all the pastors, family, pulpit members, and friends. We welcome you today. If your shoes, if your shoes hurt your feet, how do you say it, y'all? Take them off. If you feel like shouting, "Hey, praise His name," I would like to welcome you. Once for the Father, once for the Son, and once for the Holy Ghost. And again, I say welcome, girl. Call me, okay? I can do that. I ain't got no problem doing that. If you need me to cut a little rug, I could, you know, I could shut, I could do it, I could do it. After that whole little tit for tat and argument is over, we finally get to these Dove Awards, okay? And this is where uh, my next level of frustration begins to come in at these Dove Awards. Now, I'm happy for Erica. I think this is a really big deal for her, and I think she really did well at the Dove Awards. She looked beautiful. She was calm. She was poised. She had her moments in between, but she did a good job. Now, when she gets there, she's telling some random white... I, I know y'all probably get tired of me. She's telling the nice white ladies that she had to fly commercial to come in there. And Warren is off to the side listening to her, and he believes that Erica is complaining. I didn't think that Erica was complaining about flying commercial. I think that Erica was just saying, you know, I ain't been blessed yet to fly no private jet, so I do still fly commercial. And, you know, I'm a little tired. I got jet lag. You know, it is what it is. I didn't... I didn't see the diva in that that uh, Warren was talking about. Now, when she got to that red carpet, the way that she was acting with Warren, she was giving me a little bit of diva. When she was just like, hurry up, Warren. Why don't you have on this? Why don't you have on that? And then, did y'all see when Warren stopped her? And he was like, hold on a minute. Breathe. And she, took a, uh, she takes a deep breath, and she's just like, <sighs> I was just like, oh, yeah, girl. You better get it in check for your man snatch you up out there on that red carpet. He'll roll you up, roll that red carpet up, roll you back. <laughs> Erica goes to see Google to uh, do her wig changes. She wants four wig changes and four outfits. I said, oh, girl, you think you went to Oscars? Huh? You big time. So Google is there. She's with the team of people, and they're showing Erica the stuff. Sorry, y'all. thought I had to sneeze. And Erica has an attitude. Okay, I think that Erica's nervous. I think that Erica just really wants to look nice and um you know, it, it's coming out in a way that we're not used to seeing Erica. She asked Google, do you want me to punch you in the chest? When Google made a suggestion about her hair and makeup. Um, you know, she got these these clothes that Google picked out. She's complaining about the clothes. 
Google is really giving her the eye like, who is this person? Okay, you going to make me miss working with Tina. Then Google go back and fix it. Just like, no, I don't want to work with Tina. I was kidding. <laughs> Even Erica's bad side is be better than Tina's bad side. So, uh, yeah, Erica ends up finding a red dress. And I don't know what was funnier, her putting on the red dress or Kim, the makeup person's reaction to the red dress. Because Kim was like, whoo! <laughs> I said, Kim, girl, you ain't like the red, did you? <laughs> so, Erica found, ends up finding her outfit. Everything is fine. And once she gets out on stage and she starts hosting, um, she is rushing back and forth trying to do these changes. And Warren is just like, you know, Erica is really being a diva tonight. You know, she, she kind of pushy. She's doing a lot. Yeah. I think she might be letting this whole Devil Wars go to her head. I, I still don't know if I believe that fully, but... I mean, she had a way about her or whatever. And um, I forgot to mention that while she was on the red carpet, she was trying to avoid Mitch, who was there as well. Okay, Mitch has this whole plan where he's going to apologize to her. He's ready to do the apology so he can work with Corn, but uh, he can't track Erica down because she all over the carpet. And when she see Mitch, she's just like, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here. So she did not, well, Mitch did not get a chance to talk to her. So, uh, after Erica does uh, I need just a little moji, you know, she gets out there, she has on a pair of sparkly pants. I, I don't know what it is about these girls and these sparkles, but anyway, okay, after she's done, she begins to get emotional, she looks as if she's about to cry, and she tells Warren and Goo backstage and us in the confessionals that she allowed the Dove Awards and all the excitement and the wigs and the hair to get bigger than the purpose, which is God. And uh, she felt disappointed in herself. She said that she was mean to her sisters. Uh, she, she played this whole thing wrong, and she was disappointed in her actions. Um, and she just really felt some type of way. So she gets out on stage to accept her award for the nomination uh, of... Um, I don't know if it was best new gospel song or what. But anyway, she, she received the award for I Love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? you, you, you. I don't like that song, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, children of God. I don't like that song. So, uh, after she accepts her award, she goes onto the stage and she's giving a speech. She tells the... The crowd I almost had like a little mini breakdown in the back. And um, I just realized that I allowed this whole thing, this show, I allowed things to get to my head. I became proud. And when it's all said and done, whatever I do in this industry, in music, in all that I do, I pray that God is pleased with what I do. And I never forget to give him the glory and know that everything that I have and everything that I do is for him. And that... You guys, that is where we're, that is when my frustration went to happy, and I was proud, and I was glad that I watched the show, and this show always has a way of doing that to me. You know, it frustrates me from beginning to middle, and then we get to the end, and then the warm and fuzzy starts coming back. So it did come back. Good save, we team. Um, sometimes, you know, as people, we do get proud, okay? We do get full of ourselves, and you got to remember where your help comes from, okay? There's nothing that you can do on your own. It is all because of him, and he gets the glory in all of it. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how much you trained. I don't care how hard you work. Um, you know, he, he does get the glory. You know, the word tells us that he opposes the proud. Uh, I forgot the rest of it. <laughs> but I know it's got humble in it, so... You want to try to have a humble heart at, at all times. And so that, that part really, really touched me. Um, and I just really appreciated them showing that moment for Erica. Meanwhile, Tina and Teddy are watching, you know, while they're getting ready. Uh, all thanks to Teddy because Tina was just like, I don't want to watch no Devil Wars. I'm trying to get ready. And Teddy's just like, come on, it's, it's our sister. Come on, let's watch. So they end up watching and uh, Tina did see her, her speech and she calls Erica and she's just like, you know what? You don't need to be worried about it, okay? That, that's just the enemy attacking your mind. Said, don't you condemn yourself, okay? You got to pray and move forward, push past it, get over it, okay? And do you. Do your thing. Continue to do what you do. Continue to lift him up. You know, she's going in and she's offering her prophetic word for 
Erica and Erica just kind of nodding her head. It was a good moment between the two sisters to see them come back together despite adversity. You guys know how it goes. And, you know, to show the love that they have as sisters. Warren says, you know, when you have a woman like that who can get up there and really give God the glory, it makes me just love her even more. And I thought that, oh, y'all, I want me a man that love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? <laughs> It was a good episode, touching episode, and um, now I'm going to hurry up and do episode five. I would change shirts for y'all, but y'all don't even want to know what time it is that I'm doing this review. It is really, really late, and I'm sleepy, and I'm hoping that it doesn't show, but I'm going to do episode five. I'm going to get these uploaded, and I got to get the schedule right, y'all. I know. I know. Y'all ain't got to tell me. I already know.